Hi folks, um, so I've had a few requests about doing a demo on windy.com. It's um, being mentioned regularly throughout the Sea Safety Swimming course. So um, I am no expert in apps at all, but I know what works for me in my area. And uh, I generally find that if you stick to one app or, or two at the same time all the time, um, then you get to know these apps, all their little glitches, whether they work in a specific area or not. So it's good to choose one and stick with it. In the beginning, you could choose two, Windy and Magic Seaweed, and compare the two and see which one is more user-friendly. So I find Windy.com um, pretty user-friendly on the phone app. On the browser, it's still just as good. Um, however, it doesn't have Tide on it, so... Um, on the phone app, it's great. You know, I'll, you, you can just check the tide. You click on the tide, and it's all included. So you you don't need to use Tide Times, which is an additional app that sometimes I use just to double check. <laughs> um, the key to forecasting for a swim is these are all tools, um, and nothing beats personal experience um, on the beach or local knowledge of the area. So just use these as forecasting tools if you're planning something different or. Um, going for a swim the next day to see if, if it's the right conditions and if it's not the right conditions um, you'll find out soon enough anyway when you get there so and that also aids to your learning on these apps and how they forecast and whether they're accurate or not so I haven't logged in but you can create an account on Windy and you can add in your favourites or you can just search a location up here at the top left side down on the right hand side is your menu bar um, and it I've got, well obviously this is a satellite radar satellite picture um, and then I've got wind, thunder, temperature, clouds, waves. You can set this to anything you like. If I show you the more layers that you can add, you just click on this arrow to the left and more options pop up here. So you could have sea temperature if you wanted there. It's not going to be entirely accurate to your area but it is handy to have. There's also currents which are fairly accurate but I wouldn't rely on these as well but it's really good to have currents so you know even areas of the UK that might be susceptible to higher current speed because it does demonstrate that it shows the Bristol Channel and um, places up at uh, northwest of Scotland okay and normally in the app you'll have a tide option here as well so you can add that as part of your favorites so I'll just close that down down on the bottom here, you've got, this is your key to speeds, wind speeds, or at the moment it's looking like it's rainfall. So let's come out of radio and satellite and go to wind. That's the first thing I would do when I'm thinking about a swim. How long has it been windy? What's the direction? Is it going to bring a swell? And what height will be the waves? But you'll find all that out in other sections. So we'll just go to wind. Right, so you can see here nice and colourful and if you look down at the key to the knot speed down here, you can see all the low coming down here uh, from the north. And if I type in a location that I want to swim at, you can do it two ways. You can click on an area and a weather picker comes up. So if I zoomed in, obviously I'm not going to be swimming away out there. So this is the Outer Hebrides where I live. And I want to swim, I'll just move the map. I want to swim on the west side of Lewis because that's where the most beautiful beaches are. And I'm praying that there is not a swell coming in here. So at where I want to swim is just about, I'll zoom in one more. They are. And this area is called Tri Naberi or Reef Beach. Some people will, will know. So right away you've got a snapshot of what the wind speed is. So it's a northerly wind, 16 knots. I'm guessing there'll be quite a big wave height there. Um, judging by it's a wee bit the speed of the wind out here is a wee bit higher, between 20 and 30 knots. Um, so you can get more information on that beach area. Sorry, you can also type it in up there. I'm not sure if I said that. So I could have typed in Reef Beach and it would have taken me possibly to Reef Village. Um, but you have to make sure your your marker is out in the sea. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use the drop down. Remember, this is wind speed alone. 
Okay, so this gives you more information when you click that down arrow and you can see the cursor is still in that area. So down here you've got your seven day forecast. So I can pick what day I want to go swimming, which will say Friday. I've already selected it Friday at 10 o'clock. So Friday 9, between 9 and 10 for wind speed, it says 16 knots, but it's gusting to 29. There's also some rain showers, so obviously with rain usually gusts come, so it's highly likely that it's going to be force 5. So already I'm thinking, no, no swimming there, and it's an onshore wind, so it's coming onto the beach. Um, I will show you what the waves will be doing now. So you, there's two ways you can do that. There's a bit down here on the bottom left, so you can click waves there, or you can go up to here and click waves up here. So this is waves, right, and the picker changes, it includes what's hidden behind here. You've got the primary swell coming this way, and then you've got a secondary swell coming that way. So at the moment the swell is actually pretty low, there's, there's not really anything I'd be concerned about there. And because this one is coming that way, there's going to be shelter, I'm, I'm not bothered about that. Um, but the wind speed is hidden behind this secondary swell, just so you know, there's usually three um, tags that come up here. So Friday at 10 o'clock we're looking at wave heights of 3.9 metres in a nor from a northerly direction and the swell height of 0.5. So the swell period is also 10-11 seconds so um, okay right so the wave height and swell is important. Anything between 1.2 and 1.5 is really quite difficult sw swimming conditions for most swimmers. Some people are able to get out of that if they're experienced and they know the area and they've had years of sea swimming um, you can generally make a decision what to do, can you swim past the waves and go out. Um, but generally speaking for new swimmers anything even over a metre, 1.2 is, is probably just a little bit challenging. Once you're more experienced and you know what you can manage um, probably go up to 1.5 maximum if you're used to it but that's still quite a big wave I certainly wouldn't go out on more than 1.5 but it's all dependent on wind, wind direction has the wind direction flattened the water as well so let's go up here and select waves so again the colour has changed because we're now on waves and it's showing it up to 6 you know so between 2 and 6 on the colour code there if I go to primary swell, it changes again. So there's not really a lot of swell, if you remember it was 0.5, so not a big issue there. But the wave height is the biggest issue here, and it's an onshore wind. So I would say, yes, there might be some protection with the islands here, but with waves at 3.9, which are likely to be more out here than in here, it's probably going to be a wee bit less, but that's going to be a big force coming in here. So I would say no to that swim. <laughs> I still would like to go to the beach though because it's a lovely beach but I would make a decision and just say no. Um, probably what you could do if you lived on an island, if you were lucky, like us, <laughs> the other side of the island is usually sheltered from big uh, waves like that um, so you could try and pick a spot there but there's also some waves coming down from the north east here so you, you could pick an area around here that could be sheltered. What we tend to do is swim on the east side in the winter um, because we are battered by um, Atlantic swells quite often and we've got this lovely bit of area here where if it's a northerly it's really bad here so we swim on this side of the bay um, and conversely if it's a southerly wind or anything southwesterly which is usually what we get then we can swim on this side of the bay here it's usually quite sheltered. So these are things to consider when you're forecasting. Um, use them as tools. Don't uh, make a decision based on a tool alone. The best thing to do is get into the habit of using Windy and Met Office together um, or and, and going down to your local area. Write your predictions down and then have a wee look and see what's happening at your area. That's the best thing to do. And eventually, as time goes on and you get used to the area, you might not need the apps so much. It's always good to just double check. You'll you'll always need Met Office, you know, for weather, um, but you might not need it so much. So that's windy. Hope you enjoy.